All right, so Vitya, we got uh, we got a bunch of people popping on, and we're gonna have uh, Professor Tom records these and throws them on YouTube for generations to come. They're gonna hear the legendary Ceviche. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you so much. It's great seeing you, and we're excited to see what you have in store for us tonight, brother. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Ready. Ready? Run it. How's everybody going? My name is Ray from Dora, nicknamed Ceviche. I'm Michelle Buyo Profidio's black belt. Um, I am an assistant professor on the Carlson Gracie, a BJJ professor at uh, Unity Martial Arts. This is my student and training partner, Jose Alejo Caceres, the Fresh Prince. And uh, we're going to show you some more uh, funky stuff today that uh, we learned a long time ago. And we're going to push it forward. Good to see everybody here. Got to see everybody healthy and uh, continuing your training no matter what. No matter what the situation is, the fact that you're not home just binging on Netflix and uh, eating junk food is a big deal. The fact that you're here uh, continuing your evolution into this incredible art of jiu-jitsu is, uh, you know, it sets you apart from the rest of the world that decided to just lay down and quit. No one that's on this chat right now or that continued or will continue is, uh, is, is, is far from uh, filled with fear. They just continued uh, their training um, in a safe controlled way just to uh, make sure that when they got back on the match, they wouldn't be completely out of shape. So uh, we'll finalize this one, uh, this uh, Zoom meeting today with some really cool stuff and, uh, and a good time more than anything else. Ready? All right. So usually I like to start with a takedown, but since this is jujitsu, the game doesn't finish. If you get taken down and pinned. So we got taken down, we continue with a guard. Now I believe that the guard should be fun but aggressive. So if Jose is with this guard, I'm gonna close my guard and make sure that he doesn't pass. His object here is to pass. So he's gonna put his hands here and I'm gonna close my legs and I'm gonna peel him down and I'm gonna continue to move around my hands with my legs. The minute that I have an opportunity, and he starts about to pass, I'm gonna weave my hands over and catch him with what I like to call the Mr. Uncomfortable from the guard. I don't know if it's a shoulder lock, I don't know if it's a choke, I just know that it's really uncomfortable. So, one more time. We'll be over here, Rosie's trying to pass, and I'm gonna come over here and weave my arm Trapping his neck, creating oh, a yeah. mata leon, and making it really uncomfortable for him. Until he passed. If he starts breaking that and trying to defend, I'm going to continue to move. I'm going to grab his lap and peel him as I set my hooks in. We're going to continue the chain to this position, squeezing him using the bend of the wrist over his shoulder, over his trap, pushing down, using that fulcrum point until we get the tap. Let's start with those two right there. First things first, guard, he's breaking, grab sweep, trap. until he tap. Start with that right now. One, two, one, two. I don't get your stools. I'm not good at this stuff. What do you mean? You're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Is that how you did it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I really want to be on the one with back. All right, guys. Just make sure you guys have your, uh, you guys have your partner or jujitsu dummy on you. We, we have uh, some folks that have a, a dummy and uh, a partner, but the majority of the folks are watching and just kind of absorbing and taking notes and uh, just kind of mentally rehearsing it. So if you don't mind just showing us the moves one more time. Gotcha. Why not? Show the, the, the head honcho 
my other professor, <laughs> Manolo, <laughs> Buyo's older brother. <laughs> What's That's a, that's a special appearance. Hey, that doesn't happen quite often. Manolo is the type of guy that show, throw some little magic, and then leave. That's Manolo I, right there. Kind of like someone I know. A little a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about. Ray. So, Ray. aggressive guard. Aggressive. Move, move, move on. You select. Don't just stay here holding him. You know, be aggressive. Either commit to a sweep or commit to a submission. Now, there's a bunch of submissions that come out of here, but sometimes this guy has his elbows in. So we want to break. And then over here, it's using keeping your chest pinned against the back of his shoulder. This comes in. I like to turn this right into his head and get the top. Arm triangle, modified arm triangle from the guard. Makes you uncomfortable. We got 50 people in the chat. Yeah, man. Uh, Fresh. Hear What's me? up, brother? How you doing, my man? Good to see you here helping Ray. Listen, just for people have an idea what's going on, uh, tell, tell everyone where do you feel the pressure. Tell everyone where you feel more uncomfortable. And give you your thoughts because you are you are on their position, and some of those uh, uh, some of the folks here that are on Zoom, they sometimes they do the you know the situation. They don't have a training partner right now, but I'm yeah. pretty sure eventually they're gonna have uh, someone to practice the move. As you receiving the move, explain it to them. Uh, if Maybe you feel a neck crank in some point or you feel a pressure on the choke. Like, give you your thoughts because for, for the perspective of Ray, it's very neat and very sharp, the technique. Yeah. So it's just like from the other person to understanding when they're going to tap, how they feel in the tap, you know, where you feel the pressure, you know what I mean? So that's the most important part because they can go get it and squeeze as much as they can but how do you feel? What's your thoughts on that position, especially on that situation that he has your arm triangle? You feel like a lot of pressure with your own arm. You feel yeah. Arm. Like give your thoughts about it. All right, all right, cool. I'm gonna start sharing right now. Then I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Ray perform the move, and as he's doing the move on me, I'm going to um you know describe what I'm, what's going through you know I me mean, as as the the guy getting applied. So perfect. Perfect. That's exactly right what now I took, I took I took down Ray. Yes. Aggressive wrestler stylist. You know, and as I'm as he's trying to hold me down, he, he doesn't want to eliminate the space. As I'm posturing up, he's gonna you see how he's gonna sweep my arm. This 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 puts me in that that it like he really misdirects all of my energy as me coming up, he puts all my coming up to the side so I fall off of his body. And now my arm feels kind of trapped. I feel safe right here because nothing is cranked yet, but I see that like Something, something's weird that my arm can't go back out because his rib cage is blocking my tricep from pulling my elbow back into, you know, a safer position. And now his guard is, you know, nice and locked up. I, I mean, I, like I said, I feel safe until he starts applying the choke. And now I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to fight it. Of course, I'm a tough guy. I'm going to try to fight it. But now I feel, I feel it on my, right there on my, on my vertebrae, my upper neck vertebrae. You know, like I, it's, it's very painful, and then I feel a lot of pressure in my head, like blood is not being circulated. As you can see, my, my, my head is turning red. And that's coming from this shoulder right here, just, you know, putting it into my neck in, in this side, and his and his uh, ulna on the other side of my other arm right there, barring it. You know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a nice clamp. It's a very natural clamp. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm creating as much space as I can, but he's cranking. And even though, even though I can breathe, it hurts. This, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up with some serious pain. If I, if I did escape, it's going to be painful. It's not going to be uh, something I'm going to enjoy uh, trying to break. Yes. I just want to clarify because some people are probably going to go like all over to try to do the choke. Like, and they're probably going to 
pulling the neck all the way up. And the way that Ray did it, the way that Ramon went through the hand and clamp was very like, very like me. It looks like two perfect puzzle pieces coming together, you yeah. know? And then I noticed uh, uh, he switched for the little grip here, you know, with the hands together like this behind the back putting a lot of pressure too. It's just like that feedback from you, his pressure, which is great, but you feeling that pressure, you know? Of course, you don't need to say as he's squeezing because you might be going to, night, night. But I'm yeah. just saying, I'm just saying you can actually, it's just like, like I said, you know, some people are going to try uh, next week. Oh, I have a buddy. Hey, listen, I learned this move. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. You got to make sure you're around the neck. Get it nice and tight, grab the biceps, and then start and squeeze. Not pull it up. So that way, like you said, your neck doesn't just attach to the vertebra here, right here. But that's a great one. Go ahead, Ray. If you lift, if you start pulling the neck and turning into like a, like into a neck crank, you're going to lose the position, and the person is going to be able to pass. It's gonna, you have to commit to the choke. And if the person starts stretching the neck, where there, where you're, you know, from here, it's just a simple one. He has both hands here, especially with the elbows, and use and make it a point to weave. Once you get to this position here, if he starts ejecting, ejecting, ejecting the arm out, and you miss the choke, then we can continue with the back take. Maintain his hand. We set the choke. Wrap, walk your fingers, head real tight, gable, bend your wrist slightly over his trap, and then use this right here as a lever, making this, I guess, like a fulcrum point. And bending, pushing as you create pressure. Go ahead, Joe. Pressure on his neck. One more time. So we're here with Joe. He's, you know, he's trying to pass my guard. It's the name of the game. He's trying to pass. I'm going to make it a point to boom, weave, and trap. Once this trap is set, I'm going to commit to it. Let's say he starts getting out, he starts stretching. I'm going to commit to taking the back, grabbing whatever I can. This arm stays here. It resets, sinks in. More than likely, he'll be defending. He'll be defending. This arm is free, so I'm going to gable. I'm going to put the bend of my wrist over his trap. This elbow comes in deep, and I just breathe in and pinch ever so slowly. It doesn't have to be fast. You don't have to rip it, none of that. That's for something else. A real slow, controlled pressure, making sure you don't lose the position, because you'll end up right back in your guard. Man, that's, that's for, for everybody that's here watching, I just want to uh, give a little props to Jose Carceres, one of the highest top MMA fighters in Florida. Very knowledgeable, very respectful. You know, uh, I just want to give it that, Ray, because uh, Carceres is like, it's a, it's a great MMA fighter to watch. I'm very humble uh, to be able to be on his uh, friendship circle, you know, and introduced by Raymond. See, I even have my daughter here. Say hi, Emma. Yes. Hi, Emma. Yeah, Emma. Emma wants to. Sh Emma wants to show the kitty live on television. Oh. Got a kitty. They leave the right. So the kitty is gonna be world wild, like Jose said is and Raymond. But I just want to give a when I when a, when Ray was mentioned, uh, Jose is a tough cookie. Yes, it is. Being incredible in uh, South Florida, uh, top MMA fighter, you know, very hard, dedicated man. And uh, I'm very glad that Ray was uh, be able to get you here, my friend. So thank you very much. Professor Ami, you can go ahead. I just want, I just want, I like to praise people, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I love no, to no, make absolutely. sure those guys, they have the right credit because that's what they deserve for. They work hard, family, Father, you know, like in this whole situation, they keep the life straight. 
and future is going to be very bright. I'm pretty sure and positive about that. Absolutely. We're lucky to have Jose and Ceviche, of course. We have some awesome people in our Ghost Squad family. We appreciate you being here, Jose. Uh, quick question for you, Professor. I missed it. I'm sorry. It was from Nacho. Nacho is asking, with bigger guys in this position, is it smart to shift to a guard, shift the guard to more of a foot-on-the-hip type pressure? Or once you got it there, it's game over 100%. Okay. He's saying that when there's a bigger opponent, for the, for the top opponent, right? The guy on top? Right. For, that fir for the first move. For the first move. Is it why, like, so is it for the bigger guy that's on top or for the bigger guy that's on bottom? Uh, Nacho, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is it's for the bigger guy is on top. Okay, bigger and is it wise to, to like, you know, so take the back to kick the leg off so that he falls over? He's asking uh, if you could shift the guard or if it's smart to shift the guard and put the feet on the hips instead of a traditional guard. I, I, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in using uh, your opponents. I'm a big believer in strength in using whatever given uh, uh, opportunity you have to commit to the submission. And if you have conditioning, if you have strength, as long as you're not running out of strength in the middle of the match, you're not using too much strength. But before all of that, I believe in using his strength and his weight against them. So I know. All right, Mano. Bye, Mano. I, I believe in using his strength, you know, against them. So Usually when it's a bigger guy, go back in the room. When it's a bigger guy, you know, and you're a smaller guy, sometimes, not all big guys, don't be here controlling, you know, so you're constant. So maybe just the fact that he's putting so much pressure down on you will make this that much easier, you know. If he puts, you know, all of that, he's, you know, smashing you, smashing you, just enough of a hip switch will create the necessary spot so you can commit to the submission. Now granted, not all submissions work the same way. So if this happens, you should start looking for that hook and push in. If he pops his leg up, no problem, even better. Yes, sir. Stretch it out. This leg comes around, holds position, and you commit to the back kick. If he starts climbing it, leave the arm out, let him. Let them continue. It doesn't have to end here. We can continue chaining. Beautiful. Continue with the with the you know with the arm lock. You want to chase the weakest point, especially on those really big, strong guys that want to pull you. If not, if not jujitsu, um. Uh, the, 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 the beauty of jiu-jitsu is, is it's a strength on manipulating your opponent's weaker joints or joints to get the tap, uh, to get the submission. So it's always chasing that, always using leverage. Think of a table. A table has, uh, you know, four legs. If you knock one table, you can run them over. You can, run, you can easily tip it. Um, the same thing with, a, with any joint. It's a hinge. Think of a, of a hinge. This becomes a fulcrum point. The lever, a little bit of force is applied, and it creates pressure to get the top, you know, to get the submission. That's why it doesn't have to be, if done correctly, it doesn't have, and nothing has to be ripped. There should be no, if done correctly, there should be no problem with getting the submission, getting the top, and not hurting your training partner or even your opponent. Awesome. You know? That's beautiful. Nacho, that, that answers your question, right, buddy? Thumbs up? Great. Awesome. That's a beautiful sequence there, Ceviche. The only route of escape is for them to get into a deeper submission. That's amazing. Can you do it? Do me a favor. This made a world of difference for me. The, the short choke, if you could talk about your elbow positioning one more time for the short choke on the second move, if you gotcha. could just highlight like that for us, it made a huge difference for okay. me personally. So when I have a back take, let me give you back take. When I have a back take, you know, I, I always... I know some people like the double unders. I, you know, I was taught, you know, seatbelt. I believe in the seatbelt. Um, the way that I like to go here is that I'll pull, usually this arm is the one that's going to be defended. So what I'll do is that I'll run my fingers here 
and I'll walk, my fingers walk, 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 just to create enough, you know, a little bit of a grip back here, you know, and there's uh, uh, Jesus, Tom will probably know what bone that is. So some part of the shoulder blade, you know, the clavicle or something. So, so I'm gonna walk this over here, this arm, I'm just gonna rip it out and sneak it in. And the way that I've seen the best action here is instead of doing it this way, is bending it, bending the wrist just a tad and bringing my elbow in as deep as possible. Now it's not just the elbow that's pushing, it's also this, I'm breathing in, my head is pushing against him, and even if he's defending, he's a little bit defending him. Even by pushing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, you're gonna get the top. Elbow in deep. That's and then awesome. push with it. That's awesome. You're creating a nice lever system there. Jose, thank you so much for taking the pain in, in, the, in the name of science. We appreciate it. Awesome. P Professor, if you want to show us the third transition there in the sequence to the arm lock, if you don't mind. Uh, no, everybody looks pretty good here. Um, yep, everybody's good on questions at this point. So we can go ahead and go to the third move. Okay. So, you know, um, the, the, the beauty of jujitsu, I was told one time um, that jujitsu should be pretty. Um, one, one of Buyo's black belts, uh, Josh, Garcia uh, actually said, jujitsu should be pretty. And I, and I don't forget that. And it should become almost like a dance. And sometimes you see um, two guys uh, that have, you know, well, you never, I was about to say mastered the art, but you never mastered the art. If you talk to any coral belt, he'll tell you that he, he's just starting to learn new things. Yeah, he knows a lot of things. He's forgotten a lot of things, but he's still learning new things. And that's when, so there's no mastery of this art. You know, there's only knowledge, learning more and more in this art. So um, the, the, what I consider to be the beauty of jiu-jitsu is turning it into almost like a dance, um, not never blowing up your strength and, and gassing out. So if the choke isn't working, you know, he's defending. You can. He's too strong. You know, simple weed. Right? Control the head. Bring the arm around, push the leg over, and continue with an arm lock. If, go back up. If the arm. Professor, if I could stop you there for just one second. Sorry, Jose, if you could just slide forward, Jose. You guys went off, off camera just a little bit um, towards straight ahead, Jose in front, straight ahead in front of you. There you go, yep, perfect. Thank you. So, you know, the, 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 the famous uh, Kimura trap. So we're here, you know, he's controlling, whichever one, you're controlling the arm, fighting for the hands. So what I like to do here is push over here and bring this, push, 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 and bring this one over here just to push him a little bit. Now he might think he's gonna escape, but if you trap with this leg on his hip, bend your knees, do not cross your feet. I don't care if Ronda Rousey does it. Don't cross your feet. Bend your knees and continue. C grip, C grip over the hip, and you got a good arm lock. It's just a continuation of the move. It's just chaining, chaining it together. We chain, we chain the whole, we, we, we run that here. Always chaining to continue the evolution of chasing the submission, which is what the spirit of jujitsu is, to submit your opponent. Absolutely. The guys on, on here are loving it. And actually, uh, Professor Tom is begging for one more time on that arm lock, please. Okay, these, I'm I, I'll speak up, I'm sorry, one more time per Professor Tom, if you don't mind. The arm lock one more time. Over here, see bro. Two more, Bring this leg 
Drop the hip. Bring this around. Push on his head. If you can't bring it around for whatever reason, drop the arm. Now you can cross your feet. Don't cross your feet down here. Here. You can cross your feet. Now it becomes easier to bring this around. Continue with this position. This leg comes around, pushes on his head, and continues. Switch, switch, over the head. If the guy is defending really good, defend. You can do the old, I believe, uh, what was that Tommy called it? The homestead stomp? <laughs> Let it go. But you should be able to finish the key lock, from, the, the arm lock from right here. Looking for it. And from there, it doesn't have to end there. You know, if he's defending too much, so look. And continue with the bar. The chain continues. That's the top awesome. and below the waist attack. Beautiful, Professor. Now, you mentioned something about not crossing your feet when you have his back. Why is that? Why don't we want to cross his, our feet? Well, there, there's a place to cross feet. There's a place, if you're on the side, outside of his hip line, you can cross your feet. You know, way outside of the hip line when your butt is over here, you know, you, you actually scoot it up. Let me get over here. But if my feet, if I have my hooks in, and I decide to believe that I'm gonna hold them better if I do this, and Jose puts his foot over me and starts extending his hip, I'm gonna tap real quick. Or I'm gonna lose one of my ankles and get the other one spring. So if I'm over here and I come to this position, here, I don't mind locking my feet on this side. You know, even in a body time. But if I'm over here, I'm trying to. You gotta even watch guys that will cross the feet for you. Cross them. Boom, and lock. The horrible foot lock. Dirty foot lock. Those dirty foot lockers. That's awesome. So yeah, we should, we'll, we'll remember to not cross our feet when we have the, the back. Now we get this question a lot. Uh, people would like to know what your favorite submission is. Man, uh, <laughs> there's so many, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fond of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fond of all attacks, you know, you, you know, I, I still remember my first uh, leg lock. My first knee bar that Buyo showed me a um, long time ago, and it was a it was a really strange one from the half guard, and I've and I've always enjoyed that because it came from a, a horrible position, hmm. you know. You're getting smashed. The guy's about to pass your guard, you know. And I, I still remember to this day. It's my favorite sweep, you know. Um, and and it's the top knee bar from when you're about to pass. That was many, many years ago. And I saw it and I was like, and I, you know, drilled it and drilled it where I, you know, I, I chase it, man. I love that submission. I guess it would be between um, the arm triangle from, the arm triangle from, uh, from the mount, not getting off, and that, uh, and that knee bar would be my favorite submission. Well, I don't, I don't mean to pu pull you off your game or pull you off track, but you know, we got to see that knee bar now. Do you mind? Oh, oh, no, that's a secret one. Oh, Only a few of us know that one. Well, I'll have that's to pay for a price one. next time I'm in Miami. Buyo, can I show it or no? Yeah? All right. Ray, we, we have the privilege here. Come on. You kidding me? So we'll be in this half guard position. And maybe we'll be with the knees up with it. Come out knees and feet. Come around. Feed the toes and hook this leg. Run this foot over. Stretch them and roll them. As I roll them. 
As I roll them, I'm still in this position with this foot here trapped deep in this right here. Look where his leg is. And all I do is press and to a real quick top. Great, great. Yes, sir. The same position, stay on the same position on top, grabbing the foot, but just turn to this side so people can see how Cassetti's legs is going to look alike. Same position, just turn around. Yes. This way? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you ended up with the that deep half guard sweep, which should finish holding on to the toes. And this hand over here should be wrapped around his thigh. So you did the, you know, deep half guard sweep. But then you stay here. And instead of passing, you continue to apply pressure with your hips and my foot hooked onto his. Right here, my other foot too. Or if he starts going crazy and gets that leg out, you will win. You just No, always chain, 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 chain. That's vicious, bro. You put a big smile on Professor Buyu's face. That was awesome. Now, we have a question from Matthew. Matthew is asking, how many years did it take you to get your black belt? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. Too many and not enough. But I still don't, man, I have so much every day that I put on my black belt. I, I, I look at my belt and as I put it on, I, I remember every time I leave my house, I say a, a small prayer to... to well, my concept of God is the most high God. And, and, I, and I ask him that I can push forward everything that jujitsu has done for me, that I can teach it. Not just the ability to break a wrist, an arm, a knee, a leg, nothing, but everything else that it did for me. The, the, the real positive things, because granted, jujitsu is the hand-to-hand -hand combat of the samurai. And not to be taken as a hobby unless you choose to impress others with your newfound techniques, Miyamoto. Um, but everything else that really matters about jujitsu, the, the, the destruction of the ego, getting rid of it, or at least making it into something that is good, that, that harnessing the positiveness of the ego, um, knowing that life is finite to make the best, that teaching and, and paying it forward, uh, is probably, uh, one of the greatest things that any human, um, can, can get to do, you know, and once you get to that, that's a, you know, everybody's always looking for fulfillment. Well, I found mine, you know, um, I'm forever grateful to, to, to my professor, um, you know, to both of my professors, but in this, this art, this, this martial art, this incredible art of Uyo, um, you know, showed me the way, you know, this what? is my religion. You know, like, you know, the Mandalorians, you know, this is the way, this is the way. And I'm sure the Mandalorians train jujitsu too. Um, so every time that I put on that belt, I, I, I wonder, to, I, you know, I, I think, am I worthy of this? And I always have this little bit of doubt, like, am I worthy? Uh, uh, what am I, you know, am I, and that constant doubt, am I worthy of it? Am I worthy of it? Keeps me in line, you know, keeps me when I'm about to deviate from the path, you know, from Bushido. Uh, that honor, sincerity, duty, loyalty, heroic courage, compassion, and trust. You know, when I'm about to err, about to curse, about to get angry, um, you know, just make it a point to, nah, man, let me be worthy of what I've attained. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have, a, I have a, a constant struggle on trying to be, you know, worthy of, of that gift, you know, and I don't think that I'll ever be uh, an excellent uh, black belt, and that's all, and that's good for me because it'll keep me striving to try to be, you know, an excellent black belt. Kaizen, Kaizen, you you definitely embody the whole spirit of it, and I am honored to know you, my friend. Um, we have a question here, and this is from Nacho, so don't hurt me. He wants to know how old you are and how you are in such phenomenal shape for 
um, a little bit older person? Well, that's real rude to ask someone how old they are. I, <laughs> I'm 46. And again, Nacho is like a young guy. in Colorado. He's the bald guy with the blonde beard, just so you know. It wasn't me. Okay, okay, so we're even. Um, I'm 46. Um, I've been in, in, in some kind of sport, you know, since I was young. Um, I, I'm, I'm constantly active. If I'm not spearfishing, I'm, you know, I don't skateboard anymore, but I, I train every single day. Um, I, I stretch all the time. I'm, I'm real, I'm real careful, um, with how I eat. Um, not to the point where it becomes, uh, you know, where I'm weighing food, but, but I, I'm, I'm a big believer in live food, a lot of vegetables, uh, you know, wholesome foods. Um, I, I don't eat as much uh, 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 flesh, animal flesh, as I used to. Um, but I, I still, I still have an omnivorous diet. Trying to get closer to uh, to, to to veganism, just uh, on the idea of ethics of, of not, or you know, just the, the loving life and, and knowing what uh, the value of life. So I hope I get there one day. But I'm 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 real big on either raising my food or uh, or hunting my food. And uh, real big on vegetables and fruit, you know. The majority of my plates will always be uh, vegetables and a little bit of uh, um, some kind of protein. Um, catering more towards like uh, the fermented uh, foods, I'm, I'm doing a lot of that. I do conditioning two or three times a week. Um, there's a lot of things that I can't do anymore. Um, you know, uh, my joints won't allow it. and So I've kind of uh, I've trained my body to go uh, in that realm and and made uh, um, my caloric intake diminish slightly as I've brought down my stimulus, my the amount of exercise and, and conditioning that I do. I don't lift weights as much as I used to, but I still do a little bit of compound lifting and I'm real big on calisthenics, always have been. I'm big on circuit training and uh, first and foremost, wholesome lifestyle. You know, uh, family-centered, you know, uh, clan-centered, um, mentality with, um, cause, cause you see the, the body isn't just physical. You have, you know, I, am a big believer in the, 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 the mental aspect, the, the psychological part of the body and having that healthy and the spiritual side as well, no matter what religion you choose or what God you choose to follow, you know, I, I know what I believe in. And, and I know that, uh, that, that wanting what's best for the world, you know, it has a lot to do with uh, the religion that I that I choose, the, the God that I choose, what I, um, and those three aspects put together, um, I, I believe, uh, make you healthy and whole, um, to the best of uh, to the best of your own ability. But uh, there's no perfect samurai. I'll, you know, hit up pizza. If you guys have come to my house on a, you know, on a, on a UFC event, you'll see that I'll eat a whole pizza once in a while, and then I'll be like, man, why did I do that? Why did I do that? You know, like horrible, with three or four of those garlic sauce, the Papa John's the garlic sauce, those things are so good. You know, some soda, and then, but uh, it's not an all the time thing. It's a rarity, you know? Well, if your biggest downfall is garlic sauce and pizza, you are a much better man than I am. Fried uh, chicken, man. I'm bad on that fried chicken, and I don't want to be. Like, I'm have an issue with that, man. Good fried chicken, Jesus. We're all trying to quit. We're all trying to quit, for sure. Uh, that's awesome. Definitely great advice that we could all learn from. Now, this next question comes from Tina. Tina says she saw a picture of ceviche and Tom having a tea party with kids. Where was that picture taken and what's the background? That's at, uh, at, my, at the school where, where I trained uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Michelle's school, Carlson Grace in Miami. Um, I believe in those days, uh, we, we had like a little club thing going where we were going to that same cage and kind of like after jujitsu class, we would all duke it out. And, uh, you know, for a little while there, I thought that I was, man, I'm, I got it, I got it. And Tom came along and kind of like ruined those dreams. And uh, uh, we decided one day to do something uh, so, uh, man, I, I'm going to use the word, so sweet, uh, so tender in such a violent space, you know, and, and it kind of translates, you know. The, the beauty of martial arts with the violence of martial arts, you know, the, it can go both ways. And uh, that was just Tommy and one of his, uh, you know, wanting to have a tea party. And how am I going to tell 
you know, not Tom. I'll tell Tom no, but his daughters, no, you know. And uh, Steve's daughter was there too, as a matter of fact, if I remember. Yeah, little princess, all of them, man. Good days, good days. Man, I remember Tom would have his baby. Julio would have his baby <laughs> training jujitsu, going crazy, jumping into the. That's awesome. Good days, man. You're such an awesome balance of, of masculinity and and sensitivity. It's amazing. I'm, I'm so glad you're my friend. I, I'm glad you're on my side. Uh, just a point of clarification, Tina is actually uh, what King is choosing to go by now. And um, we don't judge people. So however, whatever he wants to be called, we'll call him. Um, and Professor, it looks like Nacho is trying to backpedal because of the age question thing. He wants you to know it's his birthday in two days. He's going to be 45. And um, he is very thankful that I pointed out who asked that question. <laughs> awesome, Nacho. Happy birthday, Nacho, in a couple of days, man. I hope to uh, see you sometime. And, uh, and if you're ever in Miami, you know exactly where to come and train. Actually, so DJ, you're supposed to be in Colorado soon, no? It's been three years we've been here and you haven't came yet, so. Oh, somebody throw somebody under the bus right now. Houston, Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Oh, man, he's going down for real. It's what? We just miss you, bro. We miss you, Ceviche, man. You got to come miss out. miss you too, Tommy. We've been talking about uh, – Tom and I have been talking about going up there, me going up there and, um, and just having a good time and doing some, uh, some, some of the darker stuff. And Tom's all for it, you know. But uh, tell you the truth, man, I'm just uh, – I'm horrified of the cold weather. I get like, oh, I become like all oh, like a robot in the cold weather, man. Look at that gorgeous weather. It's in the weather right now, bro. Stop Shit. it. It's coming. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Man. I'm all living on vacation. For real, man. All the Colorado guys are giving you thumbs up, and uh, they're saying they're excited to have you out there. So it looks like we're going to have to convince you to come out. We will. Make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right, guys, if you have any other questions for Professor Ceviche, please throw in the chat or unmute yourself at this point. Uh, before I turn it over to Professor Buyu Ceviche, it is always great to see your face, man. And I've been watching, uh, I watched you on that podcast, and you are a phenomenal person, not just jujitsu, but outside and um, somebody I really look up to. And one day I want to be like Ceviche. Thank you, Amir. I want to be like Amir. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight, Professor Buyu. Great. Uh, yes, if you don't mind, uh, since, you know, pretty much uh, we do have people uh, that train um, not every day, maybe twice a week, maybe three times a week, maybe once a week, uh, due to the fact that they have injuries, due to the fact that the life gets on the way, uh, wh what, would be your, what would be your perspective as a – you train because we know there's people that are young, there's people that are mid age, there's people that are really old that train jujitsu, they like jujitsu, they, they want to enjoy jujitsu. As you, with your experience, train with a severe amount of people, what will be your advice for the young crowd, for the middle crowd, and of course for my crowd, you know, the, the, the wheelchair division? So what would be your advice for that? Because, you know, uh, maybe we have a white belt that's going to watch this, um, you know, since Tom is usually uh, uh, put on YouTube. Maybe let's, put, let's speak for that white belt that's going to watch you saying the age that you are and not to the age that you are, but what's your perspective? What's your speak? What's your speech for the young crowd, the middle crowd, and – the crowd that's not that young anymore, but they still want to, you know, have fun, have a good day to roll, train. What's your, be your advice for your perspective? Well, um, you know, get your eight hours of sleep, you know, mandatory. Multiply what you weigh times 0.8 and drink that in ounces of water daily as a minimum. Eat whole, good food, you know, a, a lot of vegetables, you know, you know, have the clarity of mind. If there's a problem, you know, deal with it, but don't let it ruin your day because, you know, follow the five minute rule. Will it matter in five minutes? 
Okay. Yeah, it might. Will it matter in five hours? It might. Will it matter in five days? Eh, maybe. Will it matter in five months? Probably not. Will it matter in five years? Definitely more than likely it won't. So it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, cleanse your mind. Also trust, you know, one of the tenets of Bushido is trust. You know, I don't know how to say it in Japanese, but whatever. Kuna Mata, whatever, however you say it, but trust. You know, I, I trust my partners that I train with. You know, I, I, I know um, that if I, and they trust me, you know, I know that if one of my uh, training partners grabs me in an arm lock, you know, there's, you know, there should be a level of trust where you can train um, extremely hard and, you know, you, the injury is avoided uh, to the utmost. Injuries will happen. They're part of this. But so will clarity of mind and uh, cleansing of spirit, you know, so it's going to come and go. You're going to get really healthy. You're going to get healthy here, healthy here, healthy everywhere. An injury here and there will happen and uh, just continue to trust and tap a lot. So, you know, beat that ego down. Leave that ego at the door. You know, the minute that you feel something weird, tap and then ask, what was that that you were going to do? Ask after class. Keep on training. Tap as much as possible. But trust is the main thing. Trusting your training partner and them also trusting you that you're not going to break a joint. Because this is a violent art. This is a combat sport. But it doesn't mean that it's an injury-driven sport. It's not meant for you to break your friends, the people that you train with, the people that you, you know, sit down and socialize with. I mean, you, you spend an hour, you know, once or twice or three times a week or five times a week or two hours with the same people. And you sweat on them. You bleed on them. You come in with a bad day and you, you stress and they listen to you. Your professors listen to you. You know, that, that burden of uh, carrying each other, uplifting each other, um, it becomes uh, almost, uh, it becomes gratuitous. It becomes graciousness uh, in the sense and you're constantly uh, uplifting each other and building each other up no matter what the, the situation is. So that, that applies also to training. You could train real hard without your training partner or the person that you've developed this incredible relationship with you know, because you can spend eight hours with a coworker, literally, you know, on the other side of the desk, and you will not develop the relationship that you develop with your tribe, the tribe of the guys that you train with, be it in Michigan, be it in Monument, Colorado, be it in Miami, or be it anywhere in the world. There's a connection between all of us, and, and all these things fall back onto trust. I trust Jose that if he catches me on a leg lock, he's not going to break my foot. But he also trusts that I'm going to tap. That I'm not going to let that ego, you know, make me get my own foot broken. So these are things that develop in time. Um, and uh, the, the more time that you're on the mat, the more you learn it. And the more time that <laughs> Tom's kids running around. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I wish you could. That was awesome. Um, Professor Boo. I think that's the biggest tenet of all. Sorry, Professor Buyu, if I could interrupt. I missed a question. I apologize, Matthew. He brought it back up to my attention. Matthew wants to know what uh, originally got you into jujitsu. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a good one. So I had, I was real busy um, in life and uh, uh, just, just real busy with crazy amounts of work. Um, just never ending. It was, uh, I had a misconception on what really mattered. And, um, and I, I remember uh, seeing my son just uh, having a little bit of uh, trouble in school and reading and not having as much time for him and wanting to break myself up in pieces. Um, and I had heard of jujitsu and, you know, all these awesome things about it, but I had a different concept. I thought it was, you know, about, about breaking arms and fighting and being able to. And uh, I... I spoke to Buyo and I brought my little boy, he was nine years old. Um, and, uh, and Buyo trained my son and about a few months later, about a year later, my son uh, went to a competition 
And I thought this wasn't as difficult as it was. And, and I saw my son, which I thought was pretty good, you know, get his ass whooped. <laughs> I had the two. And I was like, I'm going to try this because there's no way that this can be that hard. The following day, I went to Michelle in the morning. I put on a gi. And uh, all I remember is uh, getting put to sleep, you know, over and over and over and over and walking out and uh, until I, you know, started uh, getting involved, uh, learning more. And, and that's what uh, drove me to really love the sport, you know, realizing that uh, that that gi changes everything and uh, jujitsu changes everything. And uh, I'll take all the pain that I have from uh, having had too much ego in the beginning and all the competition and all, and all the things that really don't matter. I'll take that any day a hundred times over for the peace of mind that I've, uh, that, 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 that gi and this mat have uh, created in my life. Awesome, Professor. Well, we are so grateful to have such passionate uh, leaders in Ghost Squad. Thank you so much for that answer. Professor <laughs> Buyu, would you like to say anything for us before we close? Well, I just, I just want to say that, uh, you know, for everybody that's watching this, that's true. Uh, Nothing but the truth what Ray said, because, you know, I remember Ray coming with the long hair, which is you have with the black truck, listen to a CDC and jumping out of the car. And uh, we are in a warehouse, uh, literally like in the boom docks, because uh, my gym, when I started, was like in the middle of a bunch of warehouses and it was really hard to find, you know. Um, and Ray, who, who actually... Who actually mentioned to you about the dojo? I, I, I don't think I ever asked you that because I was like, I was in like in the middle of a bunch of warehouses where, where they have like uh, car sound systems. Uh, they, they, they don't have that much. The, did you got a flyer or somebody? It was a, a, a pro, uh, it, it was a, I don't remember if it was a boxer or a uh -huh. kickboxer, an MMA fighter Buyo that had started training um, jiu-jitsu with you because he mm. knew how to wrestle and he knew how to kickbox, but he didn't know jiu-jitsu and you, and he would come on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, to do sub grappling, no gi, uh, with you on, uh, in the, the noon classes. And it was, it was somebody that trained, uh, that okay. trained with you for a long time. Okay. And he ended up moving somewhere else. I don't, I don't, I don't really remember. It was well, a lot of. I, yeah, well, I was about to say, Ray, sometimes uh, I do get people, oh, I remember you. And I kind of like make that face, but I remember Ray. I remember Jose, Tom, Amir. Yeah, those are the people that are around. I remember that. It's just like going 10, 15 years back and remember the first person that took my first class. Uh, it's kind of like a challenge, but uh, I definitely want to say – it was, a, it was a great class that you delivered to everyone here. Uh, it was a great topics. Uh, and uh, I would like to take this chance because uh, I believe in connections and I believe in network and I believe in everybody being connected in some way. How uh, first, of course, have Jose Carceres tell his uh, Instagram, Facebook fan page. So everyone, oh, I see Oliver here. Oliver, my boy. Good to see you, man. Oliver's right there. Uh, 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 of course, like Jose, uh, mention about your page. How can people find you? Uh, and of course, like Ray as well, you know, because uh, I think besides everything that's going on, what's the most thing that's going to stay is like we will be connected through jujitsu. It doesn't matter the flag that we are having here. Yeah, most of, all, of all those guys are uh, under Academy Martial Arts with Tom and Lightning kicks with Amir and Ghost Squad with me and everybody are connected. But in the end of the day, the flag that stays is jujitsu. And when this thing passed, I hopefully we all can get uh, some sort of connection 
uh, some sort of a text message or phone call on the birthday or any celebration because that's what we have to do every time that we wake up. We have celebrate life. You know, Jose, give it everybody like your, 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 your Facebook or Instagram and then Ray as well so people can reach you guys out asking some questions because I'm sure they will love to connect it to you guys one day somehow. All right, cool. So uh, I'm basically on just two different platforms, just mostly on um, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, it's Jose Caceres. You should see like an MMA picture of me inside the cage. And on Instagram is K dot, well, at K dot, no way, Jose underscore MMA. And for Ray? Mine is, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too much into the but. Uh, it's Ray underscore Ray Jitsu. That's it. Kind of like a catchy name that um, <laughs> my kids gave it to me. What is, is, is it Ray Ray Jitsu? Yeah, let me, let me just make show, sure. Show it to not... them. Show it to them. Show it to them. So they know they, they're going to follow the right one. There we go. Oh, look at that. Uh, you guys see that? There he is. One in the blue. Yeah. A good looking, good looking one. A good looking guy. A good looking guy. Looking on the side of the shoulder. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's Ray. Hey, you, know, you know my integrity, Ray. You know I don't change, bro. You know me. I can change. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's up. You know what's up. Brazilian blood. Oh, yeah, man. What's up? Hey, guys. I just want to say to everyone that participated in, this, uh, uh, in those Zoom meetings, uh, I specifically, I mentioned this to Ceviche, my brother, Raymond Fondora, why I picked him up, you know, to be on the, I mean, as far as I understand, for myself, perspective speaking. You just need to put your the, mic up for us. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I just uh, want to tell you, like, uh, next week, um, I myself won't be able to do the Zooms. Uh, I'm going to start into my um, open up the gym on Monday with the, with the classes. Uh, I, I'm sure probably like Amir and Tom, they already have like their plans. So of course I would like to have them explain it to everyone how they're going to do it. Mine's going to be very simple. Rice and beans as always be. I'm going to be doing the 30 minute class. I'm going to have the camera there. Everybody can watch it, follow up until this whole thing can be able to let us like actually physical train because I miss training. Uh, I've been doing jujitsu for a long time. Uh, this is the longest time. Uh, thank God, knock on the wood. I never have an injury that took me out, but I guess like this whole thing took me out of jujitsu for a long time. So I can't wait to go back on the mats and scrap with everybody and train with everybody. And don't get too wrong. Don't come easy on me because I don't like easy training. I like hard rolls. I like hard, hard training because that's how you make the purest diamond ever. So, oh, you have your bows. Okay, good. So uh, I just want to let everybody know uh, it's going to be available. Whoever wants to follow up the classes and feel free, you know, it's, it's for everyone until you'll be able to actually scrap to everybody. But um, I, I feel very grateful to have Tom, uh, Ray here, Tom, Amir, all of us like together on this to deliver something for you guys, you know, uh, and soon, eventually we will be together on the same roof, on the same match. Trust me. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm sorry if it's kind of quiet, but I appreciate everybody uh, coming on. Can you hear me or no? It's useless. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> no. I think Amir's next. Amir is next. Yes. Amir, you can speak. Don't freeze now. No, I'm here. I'm here, Professor. Again, How's, how's Michigan is looking for right now as far as the classes? Tell everyone. Uh, well, we uh, just got an extension of our shutdown order, so June 12th is when she's going to let us open, hopefully, and I don't think uh, she's going to allow gyms to open at that point, uh, but our students have been very supportive. The majority have stuck with us, and um, we're doing the best we can. Again, we've never been through anything like this, so uh, we're just rolling with the punches, taking the opponent's pressure, and trying to find a way out. I'm off. You, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to start uh, because this is a big deal for me. So I'm not even, and this isn't the platform um, to express my opinions. I'm not being held, my opinions aren't being held back, but I'm not going to even start on that. 
I'm sorry that's happening to you, Amir. Um, th there is a safety protocol. There, there is a, a correct way of doing things. Even here in Miami where things are going to open up, you know, first and foremost, if you're sick, don't come train. Simple as that. You know, stay your selfish ass at home, you know, number one. Number two, cleanliness. Wash your hands. If you used to wash your hands three times a week, I mean three times a day, wash them nine times a day. It's not going to change anything. 30 more seconds of you washing with soap. That's it. You know, eat cleaner foods. Increase your own, you know, your immune system. Become healthier as a whole. What's the point in, in harnessing all this safety and then going back out there to eat junk food and smoke cigarettes or all that other nasty stuff, drink alcohol? You know, be honest with yourself, you know? I'm sorry that's happening to you, Amir. But uh, we, have to, we have to weigh it out, too, that you have so many selfish people. But what we're going to do here uh, is uh, we're going to continue um, uh, dealing with, uh, you know, the correct spacing um, between anyone. You know, believe in others that they will, uh, if they're sick or, you know, that, that they'll, they'll make it a point to carry themselves, govern themselves accordingly and not... Uh, and not show up to train um, and cleanliness is the main thing and the social distancing thing um, or, or whatnot to the best of uh, everyone's ability. And, uh, and I can't express enough, uh, you know, about being healthy all around, you know, increasing your immune system with healthier foods and a healthier lifestyle, healthier choices, you know. That's it. That was a good one. So thanks everybody. I want to let you guys go. Some of you guys have to go feed the kids, put the kids to sleep. We already saw bunnies from Randy. That was awesome, Randy. I saw the bunnies out there. I think it was you. you playing with the hands. That was a good one. It was Matthew. I, think, I was Matthew. Oh, Matthew, you're good with bunnies. Bunnies and, 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 and gypsies and you're good with that. I thought it was Mr. Randy. But uh, that's, that's, a, that's a wrap for today, guys. Just want to say thank you very much for everybody that's been holding here. And uh, so we're going to see each other back strong again. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey, Milan. Bye. <laughs>